Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time it's going to be Uncle Kaga and Klun versus. Oh, German team. Versus Maki and Failer, which I don't believe is a German team. In fact, Maki I know isn't German. Failer, I can't remember offhand. I think Failer is German, actually. Nope, Failer is Austrian. I'm sorry. Sorry, not Austrian. What am I saying? That's Polish. Boy. I'm really sorry then. And Mackie's American. Anyway, nationalities aside, because the game lets me do that. Yeah, that's one of those things that the spectator panel doesn't have. The old player list do have that. I'm not sure if it would be good to have it, because like, the old player list has, has the nationality. I could have seen it right there. Germany, Germany, US, and Poland, but... No. Anyway, this doesn't... There's actually... There is room for it. Oh well. If anyone really cares, talk to Google Frog. I think part of it is the clan, although the clan image could also be there, especially when it is clans. And there's a clan name in the image next to it. That'd be cool. But this is a work in progress spectator playlist, so whatever. Anyhow. Shop talk aside, let's get to the game itself. Moon Q10X is a map which is not exactly symmetric. Though it almost feels like it. It almost feels like it is, but it's not. The starting areas are quite different. The southwest side is much more defensible, which is where Onkokaga and Klun are, while Maki and Failer are over in the northeast side of the map. A bit more open, a bit harder to defend, but I think a bit closer to this expansion as well. So it's a bit easier to build up from, whereas the southwest side is easier to defend. Sort of. It's kind of weird. Anyway, we have so what was it? Spider Shield versus Light Vehicle Jump Bot. Again, an odd match. Jump on? Okay, jump on Spider I see all the time. And I'm still holding that it's probably 7-3 in favor of Spider. It might be 6-4. I don't think it's a balanced matchup. I, I think Spider has the advantage. But this is 2v2, which really puts... You can't really easily analyze matchups in 2v2. Because there's four factors on the field from moment one. So it's easy to have enough counters. Like if you can't necessarily easily counter your opponent, well, your teammate can there's no point getting into matchup stats, or matchup ideas, predictions, whatever. But, Onkokaga and Klun having a lot of reclaim to work with. Using that with a very nice power infrastructure to get some early construction, while Maki and Failer not reclaiming all that much. In fact, not reclaiming at all. Just relying entirely on static economy. How There is reclaim, though. That's the thing. There is, actually, a fair amount of reclaim in their base. There's 500 metal worth of reclaim just in their starting area. Now, whereas blue team, they have... Sorry, it's hard to see. 700-ish metal in their opening area that they haven't taken so far. And they have taken some, so it's probably closer to 800. Which is quite a lot. But at the same time, they have less static metal economy available to them easily. Like, it's a bit further away. That being said, though, it's still not that bad overall. And, well, first attack here. Klun taking a bit of a lead. I mean, like I said, blue team is very ahead economically right now. Mostly due to reclaim, but still ahead economically. That's all that counts. And they are using it, too. But Mackie and Fail are very quickly setting up in the center crater. They want to make sure they get this 7.2 metal. That is a lot of metal. They definitely... Actually, not just 7.2. It's like basically 10 metal once they take this crater as well. And... That would compete with the Reclaim. Quite well. The only problem is defensibility, and at this point, this is what I mean. Why did you go vehicles? Like, Moon Q10X is not a vehicle-friendly map. None of the craters are accessible to vehicles. Like, that purple means you can't drive there. Basically, the vehicles can only go around flank over here, or go around through the main battlefield, and that's... Well, more like this. And that's it. That is absolutely it. The jump bots, however, have no problem, but there weren't enough units... So the jump bots actually have no problem at all. There's basically nothing to stop this. Max's commander is toast. Very, very quickly being burned to a crisp. So Mac losing their commander early on. Gonna be a bit of a blow. Though the stack economy was not lost. And that commander... That's like losing three metal extractors right there. But Mackie and Failer are still ahead. They've been building up a lot. 
So the only question is, how are they going to counterattack this? And it doesn't look like they are going to successfully. Like I said, the southwest side is more defensible. So getting back at Onkaga and Klon is going to be basically more just winning the game. Which is going to come down to having a large enough army to just storm the gates. Because blue team has very little harassable right now. They have a few builders, but they aren't actually reclaiming at the moment. And they have a bunch of other stuff. But right now, if red team can hold the middle and then build up, as Klon is pointing out, build, hold the middle and build up around the other metal extractors, they should be able to pretty easily get enough of an army that they can just storm the blue team's gates. Well, I'm not going to comment on that. I'm sorry, I don't know German. Anyway, <laughs> if someone knows German, they can comment on what Kuhn and Onko Kaga are saying, but I cannot. Anyway, at this point, it looks like Red Team is going to be doing quite well here. I mean, they have a solid position right now. They have the economy advantage, but Kuhn is going to try to get through this. Gonna try to push through, and the Hermits and Venom are not in the best position. I should point out that the Venom is really the thing that gets rid of Pyros. It is the answer to Pyros that Spider has. Hermits do fine due to their health, but Venoms just hold everything in place and make life so much easier for the Hermits. Not that the Hermits really need much help right now, they're actually doing just fine against these Pyros. But as a general rule, you know, that's that's one of the biggest things that gives Spiders, I think, a matchup advantage against Jump Bots. It's like Zeus, except cheap. And has a decently high refresh, or decently low reload time, decently high fire rate. Like, like two seconds, I think? 1.7 seconds. Okay, yeah, so that's a little under two seconds. Compared to the Zeus's four, or something like four. Fail are already going for the gunship plant. No indication that they're going to be going for just Blastwing Cheese. At this base, it's a little late for Blastwings, but they might just go for it anyway to try to break down the gates. Probably going to go for Rapiers, though, because that's what you just go for. That is the thing you go for, is Rapiers. Because Rapiers are good. Well, clone with a bit of damage over here, but against dirtbags, not not that important. And to answer Failer's question there. Oh, the commander did get killed. Oops, I missed that. Yeah, the commander got completely destroyed. Over in the southeast side of the map. Rather unceremoniously killed while the pyros were attacking, so. Oh well. Both commanders down. Mackie and Failer still twice the economy of Uncle Kaga and Klun. So not gonna be a problem actually getting through this. They just need to hold the center, that's all. The gunship plant, however, still not yet built. A lot of money going into that, and Mackie and Failer aren't actually well no, not that much, never mind. Only ten metal per second going into that. A bit of metal going into power plants, and that's good. But yeah, that gunship plant... I mean, okay, the jump, gunship plant in the spider factory, but the spider factory isn't building enough. And anywhere in the flat ground, Uncle Kaga is going to be able to start really getting tra... Uh, oh, Uncle Kaga left. No one's on their own. Oh, wow, okay. I guess that must have been during the pause that... If you notice, there was a bunch of stuff being placed. Yeah, game paused briefly. I guess Uncle Kaga got disconnected or something. That sucks. No one mentioned anything about that in the game, but then again, why would they? So anyway, Clone, however, basically now playing a 1v2 against Mackie and Failer. It happens. So Clone is going to be pushing in. This is this is the flank I was talking about. Clone making use of that. And like I said, just... Okay, light vehicles make sense on the flat ground. I mean, basically the spiders have to be on the crater. At this point, it makes it really hard for Red Team to push forward. Makes it very hard for Red Team to push forward, but at the same time, once the Venoms get in there... Then under the Moderators, get rid of the Venoms. The Recluses, if they were built, would get rid of Moderators. Rapiers are up. Moderators do a number on them, though. So I'm not going to say that it's winning. Oh, okay, yeah, they were lagging. That's, what, that's exactly what was happening. Okay. But at this point, Mackie and Failer are completely in control of the right side of the map. They aren't necessarily that far ahead. These moderators are scary, and Mackie and Failer have at this point pretty much been investing mostly into units that moderators more or less counter. Hermits do a decent job tanking moderators, but they are slow already. Being slowed further is not helping. 
The Venoms would do okay, but it looks like at this point we're just seeing a flank. Like Spider just sneaking around trying to get rid of what they can. While the Shieldbot Factory going for just dirtbag balls. Just dirtbags everywhere. Trying to get rid of what they can. And down goes Clone's Commander. So at least that evens things out a little bit. Like I said, Mackie and Failure are way ahead economically. If they can hold for two or three minutes, they've won. They probably have won... They probably won the game minutes ago, actually. But Clone and Onkakaga are holding on quite nicely. It's just that... I think this is going to be the final straw. Like, if these moderators go down, there isn't much. Moderator... Like, Wolverine is one of those units that... Well, against air is useless. On this map, can actually be pretty handy, but... It's... Kind of a... It's... For holding the line, like, if you're winning, it helps you win. If you're in a stalemate, it helps you push through. But if you're losing, it's pretty easy for them to be overrun. So, I don't think that's going to matter too much. And Venom Hermit against Scorchers, well, the Venoms are going to make the Hermits win. But this is basically the end. This is the end game, unfortunately. Well, unfortunately for Kulun and Okakaga, at least. This is kind of what I mean when I say, go ahead and sign up. Clone has really high elo. Although I think so does Failure. Now oh, Failure's not bad. Yeah, Clone's like 2300. Uncle Kaka, however, is not super experienced, which doesn't help. I mean, Clone was playing one on two for a little while. So that wasn't mattering as much, but yeah, it's... Like I said, teams matter a lot in this, in this format. So don't be afraid to sign up. Really don't. We've seen some upsets. Anyway, this is... I'm just going to fast forward a bit, because it's clear that Red Team has won. Clone's putting up a Valiant last stand, but Red Team has had twice the economy for several minutes. And they won since five minutes ago, probably. It's just... I wasn't entirely sure. Those moderators are scary. And Red Team didn't have a much way of push for, to push forward, but like I said at the beginning of the match, Given the position that the blue team was in, red team basically just had to get as much economy as they could, build all of the army they could, and then once that was done, once they had a large enough army, storm the gates. These pyros doing a valiant job trying to stop that from happening, but it's too late. Rapier is finishing everything off, brawler as well. The gates have been thoroughly stormed, and a GG is forthcoming. There we go. There it is, and that is game. Yeah, so that's exactly it. I mean, this map is a little odd like that because of the fact that you basically have that asymmetry. It almost looks symmetric at first, but because of the way the star positions are laid out compared to the craters, it ends up that the northeast side is essentially trying to be more aggressive, trying to get the economy quickly. Southwest side is being defensive. If the southwest side can get the crater, it's really hard for the northeast side to get back. If the northeast side gets the crater, then the southwest side also is a hard time. I guess this kind of, this crater matters a lot. Although I am kind of surprised that this wasn't expanded to as much. But yeah, this crater matters a great deal. Like if the northeast side had lost this crater, they probably would have had no position. Because then the southwest side, they would have had a defensible position to fall back to if necessary. They would have had the economy. And they would have also had a great position on the northeast side's base. In order to finish them off. But yeah, the northeast side built up, got their army, and stormed the gates. And won. So that... That was that. That was also the stream, so that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you for watching, and like I said, sign up for the tournament. The link's in the forum. I will put it in the description on the YouTube video. But, yeah, just go to the Zero K forums. The Zero K forums have it. I think the Zero K homepage has it as the main news item, because it usually does. So go there, sign up, and have fun. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and have a good night, everybody.